In middle school, my teachers began encouraging us to use flashcards. However, they never really explained what the best method for using them was, so I had to do a lot of my own research. Since then, I've become a bit of a flashcard addict, and I've made flashcards for almost every single class I've taken. In this video, I compile all of the best tips for making flashcards. This is Flashcards 101. Before making your flashcards, you should understand that there are two different types of courses and each has its own purpose for flashcards. The first type of course relies on your memorization abilities, while the second depends on your application and understanding of the topics you learn. For the first type, it is completely fine to use flashcards as your primary source of notes. So if you ever hear someone say that flashcards should only be used for revision, this is not true. However, when it comes to the second type of course, you should have a separate notebook and you should use flashcards only for revision. For example, for courses such as anatomy and physiology, or language courses, or even if you're taking AP Chemistry and trying to memorize all of the elements, you can use flashcards as your primary source to become familiar with and to memorize all the information you need to learn. However, for application-based courses such as biology, you should always have a separate notebook with all of the information you learn in that unit and make flashcards at the end of the unit to prepare for the test. Tip number one, ignore people who say that you should only make flashcards by hand. For courses that only require memorization, you can definitely use apps such as Quizlet or Anki to make all your flashcards. For example, for my anatomy and physiology course, I did not even have a notebook and I just used Quizlet to memorize all the information that I needed to know, and I ended up getting A's both semesters. Tip number two. Instead of using ruled flashcards, use blank flashcards. The lines on ruled flashcards are often very harsh, which can pose as a distractor from the information you're trying to learn. On the blank side, you can write your words really big, which will help you memorize the information better, whereas on the ruled side, if you write your words bigger, it would look messy and again pose as a distraction. Tip number three. The faster you can read your flashcards, the better. So use a thicker pen or even a marker such as a Crayola Super Tip to create a higher contrast between the words you're writing and the blank card. This will not only make it easier for you to read, but also make it easier for you to memorize the information you're trying to learn. Tip number four. Care about the environment and improve your flashcards by not wasting space on them and cutting them in half or to whatever size you'd like. By doing this, you'll have less blank space or white space on your flashcards which will make it easier for you to make your flashcards more concise, and it will also make it easier for you to again read your flashcards and to memorize the information on them. As you can see, I'm just using a regular pen here, and it still looks very neat and easy to read. Tip number five, do not try to cram everything onto one flashcard. Make sure that you make flashcards with only one question or one vocab word on them. For example, if we were talking about mitosis, instead of writing down mitosis question mark on the front of the card and then writing down all of the different phases and all of their information on the back, simply write down what is the first phase of mitosis. This way, the question is more test-like and specific, which will already help you start preparing for the test. Then, on the back, write down one main answer that stands out, and then if you need any more information, write it in a smaller font and up to two bullet points. Since your main answer will stand out, you'll be able to memorize it better, and writing your cards in this way will also make them more concise. Tip number six, include as many simple diagrams into your flashcards as you can. All of the flashcards you're seeing in this video, by the way, are completely real flashcards that I've used throughout the past few years to study. Some of them don't include the tips that I've talked about so far because they were made before I really started developing my flashcard method. Make sure that your diagrams are as simple as possible while still including all of the information that you need to memorize. If you are a visual learner, this will be great for you because you will be able to memorize the information through images. Tip number seven, organize your flashcards. All of these flashcards are flashcards that I've either made in my past year of college or throughout my past four years of high school, and I still have them all intact, so that's a really good sign that I know how to organize my flashcards. Here are some of the ways that I like to organize them. First is hole punching them and using some of these binder rings that I got from Walmart to make them into sort of a flip book so that I can flip through all of my flashcards to review all of the information. I also like using binder clips for smaller flashcards because the ring is too big for smaller flashcards. I also have a flashcard holder with tabs in it that I use, but I always make sure to number my flashcards whenever I do that. This video took me about 6 hours to edit, so please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel. If you have any more tips for how to use flashcards, then don't forget to leave a comment and I will definitely check it out.